even for me, like, and I'm a pretty tough person. It was just, it was awful. Like the level of abuse and ridicule I got online and, and the financial mess I was in, it just felt like everything I'd been building to had been like really like f***ed up. It, even just talking about it now is hard to, to say. Mm, Do you know I what I mean? Tell. Cause it was bad. It was awful. But what they don't realize is I was pretty f drunk during that whole episode. Really? Like I was, it was, we were recording 11 AM. I was on the whiskey. Like I, I knew I didn't want to be a diver anymore. I knew I was done with that. And when I found YouTube, it felt like a little uh, window of hope. And then obviously that took off. And once I, uh, once I started getting money, yeah, it was like, okay, I, I've, I made it. Cause I, I basically gave up on money. I chose YouTube as a path to happiness. That was the idea was give up the money, forget that. You're not happy doing that job. I'd rather make minimum wage doing videos than make, six figures doing diving so i went on that path and then i, I did dawned on me oh i'm gonna make more money doing this actually once i once i was in the thousands a month it was a bit of a oh fuck like okay how do i handle this and i thought i had a good handle on it like it was little stuff at first new car move move house better place and all that and then once i came to london that was when it really went tits up to be honest with you i just started spending money like crazy i bought three new cars in the space of about 18 months um not all together like one after the other sort of thing but like um i was able to get things that i never dreamt possible and that was the moment of like oh i can have this like my favorite car ever wow I've have never lost the passion for video making. That's still there. I love it. Um, but um, yeah, I lost my way. Like this whole thing of doing something for the right reasons. Because I'd never experienced that kind of money before. I, I remember like driving that Audi, the first one, the Audi R8, when I drove that off the parking lot, that was a moment of like, what the fuck? Like, it just blew me mind. You know what I mean? The fact that I was able to, to drive a car worth, um, it was worth a hundred thousand pound and I paid for it in cash. You didn't really. Boom. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> and, uh, and I remember just driving it and it was, it, it, honestly, I, I don't regret it because even though it was a complete waste of fucking money and I wasted even more money swapping it for the other two cars, it was a real healthy lesson to learn and get out my system. Um, especially coming from a place where people set fire to your shed because there was a shed, you know, like nobody had a nice car where I came from, you know, it wasn't, people didn't even have like a Mercedes or a BMW let alone a supercar so that was mind-blowing you know what i mean and they yeah. just it was too much for us just was and a lot, a lot my ego was just going fucking crazy you know what i mean like mm. i'm the man <laughs> you know all the worst parts of me just amplified There's, there must be a reason why you got you traded it in so many times though right? Yeah, i was addicted to that feeling the new the new shit that that was the oh but but what if oh and then i seen the mclaren i remember driving it into the fucking this supercar place i looked at the mclaren i looked back at me already i was like i don't really and then i just kept looking at the mclaren going it's new that's the new shit the new hotness and it, you know it's ridiculous just absolutely idiotic never ends yeah but i would have carried on i would have carried on doing that probably if i hadn't have had a moment of like that Boom, you know what I mean? What are you doing, mate? You know? Health, health, life's good at that. Give you a good slap around the head when you need it. And I really needed it. You said boom. Oh yeah, yeah. So I had a bit of a moment where everything was just, you know, came crashing down. There was, um, a lot of people know there was the DMs, but mm. also in the same week, there was the, um, the loss of a huge deal. Um, which for anybody that doesn't know the DMs, some somebody leaked some DMs. That yeah, yeah. Some, some I had sexual, sexual DMs, DMs that yeah, were, were out yeah. there, um, and uh, me being the crazy wild bastard that I was at that moment, you know, drinking a lot, just doing all sorts of just fucking lost my way. And then in the same week, I also had a, a deal that was on the table that was pretty much negotiated, done, signed, sealed, delivered, which would have secured my financial future for the next two years with a huge company big betting company multi-million pound deal it wasn't 
it wasn't just one. You know what I mean? It was the deal. Uh, but yeah, that was a devastating blow. And then obviously having people laughing at you for sexual DMs and stuff when, you know, it was, I was drunk as fuck at the time and it was just a stupid moment. But regardless, you know, knowing that there's just such little compassion out there for you when you're having a, a awful time, it really, it, it, it took me, I got from as high as I was, it took us as low as possible in that moment of like, no one cares, everything you've worked hard for, you now don't have. I, I'd literally agreed a tenancy agreement on my flat mm. for two years on the basis that this was all going to be signed. So I'm like, How the f what, what the fuck do I do now? You know what I mean? So, and then I was hit with a tax bill that was way more than I could handle as well. Because in my head, it's like, got the cash coming and got the tax bill paid off, man, don't <laughs> worry about it. So... Everything that could go wrong went wrong. And, um, you know, I know I needed humbled, but it was brutal. That was, and, and I know it might sound to some people like out there like, oh, uh, oh, poor, pitiful, you know, white boy problems and shit like that. But it, I literally wanted to kill myself. Like, you know, I really, really did. Because it, it, it was just too much even for me like and i'm a pretty tough person it was just it was awful like the level of abuse and ridicule i got online and and the financial mess i was in it just felt like everything i'd been building to had been like really like fucked up and uh yeah it was it, even just talking about it now is hard to to say mm, do you know I what i mean because it was bad it was awful um so that left me in a really really low place People online would have had no idea because I, I remember watching that play out from afar mm. and it was just online. It was just kind of jokes. and Well, what you have to remember is they didn't know I'd lost a multi-million pound deal that yes. week. They didn't know I had uh, a six-figure tax bill to pay. Yes. Uh, so that's happening behind the scenes and that happened before yeah. The, before the DMs. So then the DMs happened as well. The icing on the cake was the DMs. Right. If it was just one or yeah, the other, yeah, yeah. you could say maybe, but when you're financially fucked and you're also trending on Twitter, people love to kick people on the way down, but what they especially love, and this is the difference, is if you're a vulnerable person publicly, you're seen to be... Hmm. I don't know. Let, let's say you're, you're seen to be in a, some sort of subculture that people view in a way that's like, oh, poor them. I hope they're all right. I'm a big, strong alpha male. I look tough. I look like I can handle all the ridicule in the world. I'm br brash, cocky. You're like, you know, so they people probably didn't think you know like and also when you're a man you don't get sympathy the way women get sympathy when they go through revenge porn or anything mm. like that you, it's not looked upon the same and i just had to sort of think about it and take and go yeah this isn't fair but life isn't fair so what the fuck do you expect brian like you know I knew I wasn't going to give up, but I, even though I wanted to kill myself, I also thought that weirdly, I think all the, uh, the shit sort of, it gave me something to resist. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It gave me, cause I'm a fighter in my heart. So I was like, nah, fuck you. Um, so, um, within a day I was like, okay, this is how we're going to do this. I'm going to get the two best piss takers I know, and I'm going to get them to rip the piss out of me, make everyone feel like it's over and done with now. Because the minute you acknowledge it, laugh it off, and show that you're not frightened, people will move, get bored, move on to something else, and they'll scratch the itch of saying, because what they really want me to do is self-destruct. But if I show I'm brave, they'll respect that and then move on. But what they don't realize is I was pretty fucking drunk during that whole episode really like i was it was we were recording 11 a.m i was on the whiskey if you love the diary of a ceo brand and you watch this channel please do me a huge favor become part of the 15 percent of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button it helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets the bigger the guests uh -huh.